Hey, what's up, everybody? Zeke. Uh, I've been reading this Bruce Springsteen autobiography. It's been really great. I've been listening to the Bruce Springsteen station. I've been listening to some Bruce Springsteen records. I was listening to this record a lot. The River. <clears throat> a record I didn't necessarily respect as much as I probably should. I listened to that. I got some country records at a new Goodwill opened by my house. This is from 1987, Gene Watson. It's a promo copy to you. Uh, but uh, I love the late 80s. I love that era, man. Randy Travis and Gene Watson and Vern Gosden and Johnny Paycheck was doing some cool things in the 80s. And early 80s, Johnny Paycheck. But this is, this is like 80s country, man. 90s country is super popular, but... I love that 80s country, man. I got this uh, Bonjo. All this New Jersey stuff. My wife's from New Jersey. Got that, right? That first Bonjo we read. That's a good record. I was enjoying that. And they're very, very efficient, what they do. Um, I didn't have a copy of this. For whatever reason, I've had copies in the past, and I must have... I, 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 I was looking at my Genesis records and didn't have the Wind and the Weathering. Uh, so I got this cool record with the nice um, hype sticker. What a great record. If you love Genesis, which I do, you know, but what a great record. Really enjoyed listening to that. It was fantastic. I got the signed Tom Paxton record. I have all these Tom Paxton records, but I don't have this one, and uh, this is a later career one, 1983 on Flying Fish, and it was signed, so I was kind of into that. If you like folk, if you like Tom Paxton. I was listening to Tom Paxton, Tom Rush, Joan Collins, um, all sorts of, you know, uh, Henry, uh, uh, Harry Sh uh, Chapin, you know, a lot of 60s folk artists. I was listening to that kind of stuff because I got a bunch of those records last year. Here's a, you know, more modern period. Not not modern, but 2005. It's a 2000s record. It was released on CD originally. You can see this was first time on vinyl. Um, deluxe LP, opaque red. Deluxe reissue includes unreleased bonus content. This was for a record store day. And I got a copy of this super cheap. This is uh, a 2018 release on Transit Sound, but uh, there's some live tracks on si on sides three and four. The original CD was just sides one and two, and then the second album of this is all live tracks, uh, which is awesome, you know. And uh, usually it's the CDs that have all the extended, you know, the extra tracks and the outtakes and the live stuff and everything else. Uh, so I'm kind of glad to see that happening now, of course. But what a killer record this is. And there weren't that many 2000s records that I really loved, to be honest with you. And that was one of them. Of course, I loved that. I recently watched this thing with um, Rick Beato, and he talked about how the, they were all being mixed. All the albums of the 2000s were all being mixed. This is how rock and roll kind of died because of that. And there were only like a couple producers pr mixing and producing all this kind of stuff. And the the uh, producer managers and stuff who were had financial conflicts of interest and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, this is a journey still in partial shrink. The shrink's kind of not totally on, but this is journey departure. It's got the shrink and the hype and uh, journey, a band kind of like yes or Genesis or whatever that like, I love all the records, but and I prefer to have a really nice clean copy of the shrink and the hype if possible. Um, you know, I've been kind of buying these kind of records, like Springsteen, Journey, uh, Bon Jovi, you know, here's a, a Motley Crue, Talking Heads, The Police, you know, that kind of stuff that was kind of bread and butter kind of stuff, and I have had those records, but I'm kind of replacing them. Here's one, too, Bad Company. This is a promo copy. I got this really cheap. I bought this at a record store for less than five bucks, and it's a promo copy. Uh... And what a great record. This is called Desolation Angels, you know. Um, you know, mainstream, you know, classic rock, man. And, and excellent. Really good record. I was listening to I was like, if you like Free, if you like Bad Company, if you like Paul Rogers, awesome. You know, just just great record. Highly recommended that. In fact, I got this Arnie Lawrence record. I got this really cheap uh, Arnie Lawrence and the Children of All Ages Inside the Glass Hour, but it doesn't have the embryo like this like these embryo records had a cutout you know and this is a promo copy white label promo copy but it doesn't have the uh the, the cutout piece that usually goes in the middle 
and some of these embryo, embryo records are kind of collectible, uh, which is kind of interesting, but, um, yeah, just super cool, you know, super cool record, and I also got this other Arnie Lawrence record from the 60s, from 1966, like, they do Beatles covers and stuff, um, you know, he does, like, Eleanor Rigby, and it, it, it kind of reminds me of, like, Quincy Jones' Bossa Nova record or something. Uh, it's got a real... It's just got, like, a very distinct 60s, 60s vibe in general, you know, and really fun. Like, a really fun record. Not a... It doesn't have... It, it kind of seems like a West Coast studio kind of uh, album more to me than maybe, like, a even though it was recorded in New York City, but it doesn't it doesn't have like a Rudy Van Gelder quality. It doesn't have a blue note kind of quality at all, you know. It's uh, I would have to say this was really fun and I really was this is a cheapy record and I really enjoyed the hell out of it. I thought it was great. Really upbeat jazz record and a really fun jazz record. Some like, you know, dollar country, cheap country records I got. This is a classic. This is an RCA or an MCA uh, reissue from the eighties. Um, I actually already had this. So this one has uh, some old um, thrift store stickers that I can't get off, which kind of sucks. And I bought a bunch of, like, these thrift store. So as I say, there was a thrift store right by me. I got some old classic country records. This one's kind of in a different one. Archie Campbell, who was on Hee Haw. This is on Electra from 1976. This is a cool one. Red Steagle. Pretty cool. Uh, I got this. Wow, they correct. This was a record I actually really needed a copy of. Girls, girls, girls. I used to have a really perfect copy of this in shrink. This one's not like the disc is like VG plus this, but it's got some kind of like locker bike kind of stuff on the side. But I mean, it's very clean. It's not bad at all. But just 1987. This would probably be my favorite Motley Crue record. And uh, I remember this record. I was 10 years old. The one that was popular when I was a little older, like middle school, was Dr. Feelgood, which is a more collectible record. But I, I like this record better personally. And, you know, the last the last track, Jailhouse Rock, they do a cover of Jailhouse Rock, you know, the Elvis song. Uh, that one is fun. Uh, and I think really kind of encapsulates the... Um, the whole Sunset Strip thing, you know, they, they were like a, they were fun rock and roll kind of, you know, they, it was a rock and roll review really is what it was, but I have to say like, Wild Side and, uh, all in the name of, all in the name of rock and roll, you know, like, it's just really fun, man. Girls, Girls, Girls is a really fun song. It's just, just super fun in general, you know, I really enjoy it. Here's a little dollar country. Connie Smith, great 60s country singer, who is married to Marty Stewart now. And uh, she's always been beautiful. And she's always been wonderful. 1966, Connie Smith. I got a copy of this. Uh, David Bowie, The Man Who Sold the World. A true classic, classic rock, 70s classic rock. 1970, what, one, two, I don't know. Anything with Mick Ronson, I just think is awesome. Produced by Tony Visconti. Just an absolute classic. This this is the boot, really, you know. The the original Mercury one doesn't kind of like look like this. And I used to have a copy of that, too, with the, with the original black and white cover. That's also been reissued, too. I probably will get a copy of that at some point, I'm sure. Somehow I didn't have this record, and I was finally able to pick up a cheap copy of Richie Valens. Of all the 50s, you know, Richie Valens and Roy Orbison and um, uh, Eddie Cochran and uh, Jerry Lee Lewis and Johnny Cash and Little Richard and Elvis Presley, you know, those are, time, those are all timeless records. They're always going to be awesome. They're always, I mean, no, no matter what, you know, as far as I'm concerned, Gene Vincent, those will always be cool records, no matter what, and they're always cool to have, and Fats Domino, and there's there's so many, but, you know, the, the greats of that era, you know, and this, this was awesome. Listening to this, I was like, God, this is so good. I'm glad I finally got a cheap copy of it. 
you know, kind of like Gene Vincent records and stuff, I, I tend to see them a lot. And, I mean, I feel like I see them quite a bit, actually, and they're always beat up and they always want too much money. So to get a fairly, you know, cheap, like, affordable, decent, decent quality, you know, copy of it, this is not perfect at all. I mean, but it's so old, you wouldn't expect it to be just perfect, but uh, it's a little scuffy. It's on Delphi. But I got it super cheap, so I got it for like less than 20 bucks. And it plays really well. You know, they made stuff tough back then, I think, but this is quite good. I really enjoyed that. It was such a good good spin. Uh, what else did I get? So I got some country, classic country record. Red Steagle, Party Dolls and Wine, 1972. You know, I like, I just really enjoy that kind of, this kind of stuff. The, what I'm listening to, oh yeah, I got this. Uh, Revolver. Again, I sold a bunch of records before I moved here and didn't have a copy of Revolver, which is embarrassing, but playing this, you know, it's kind of like, it just kind of brings, reminds you of what it's all about, really. I mean, like. What's fucking cooler than this, really? I mean, <laughs> like there is there isn't anything cooler than that. You know, I saw I saw a little clip of um, Bobby Weir. This is a promo copy of this that I got super cheap with with a promo copy with the hype sticker. But uh, Bob Weir and Bobby and the Midnight's, Bob Weir from the Grateful Dead, and I was just like blown away by how good this band was. 1981. And I haven't always taken Bob Weir's solo stuff seriously. I, although I do have Kingfish and I have a lot of stuff. And But Bob Weir's had so many. He'd had Further and he had um, Wolf Brothers and he had Bobby and the Midnights and he had Kingfish. And he's had many kind of solo projects. But um, Brent Midland from The Grateful Dead uh, was played on this. And Brent Midland was like really, really at the height of his powers in 1981. And Billy Cobham was on drums, an absolutely killer drummer. And Alfonso Johnson was on bass, an absolutely killer bass player. This was a fucking killer band, dude. Like, I, I was blown away when I saw clips of this band, and I really enjoyed this record. As, as you have a problem with a lot of Grateful Dead stuff, it's not as powerful as the live performances, but that being said, this is still really cool and really good. And to say, I feel the same way about Grateful Dead. Every Dead fan feels that. The, the studio albums are awesome and they're classic, but they don't have the power of live stuff, but that's okay. Uh, I got a promo copy of this because my goal is to get a promo copy of every Dylan record. So I, if you're a huge Dylan fan, I mean, I would actually defend this era of Dylan. 1973, early 70s era of Dylan. This is a lot of covers on this. Uh, Mr. Bojangles, which is a Jerry Jeff Walker song, and The Ballad of Ira Hayes, and Big Yellow Taxi, which is a... Big Yellow Taxi is a Joni Mitchell song, and Spanish is the Loving Tongue. Uh, Spanish is the Loving Tongue is a song that I always associate with um, Joe Eli, but they, they say it's a public demand song, or a public domain song, rather. I can't help falling in love, you know. You know Elvis did that song and stuff, you know. Mary Ann also attributed to public domain. Uh, the Fool Such As I, classic song, you know. I don't know who wrote it, to be honest with you, but uh, yeah, a lot of covers, but you know, great. I mean, like all the, all the Bob Dylan bootleg stuff from this era has just blown me. I'm just blown away by it. I, I, it's amazing to hear variations on those themes that I've heard so many times. Uh, that's pretty much it. But, you know, that's what stuff I've been kind of getting into lately. And uh, just wanted to say hi to everybody. Oops.